Do, do you believe that Israel's <coughs> military operations um, are being effective in such that they are bringing Lebanon closer to the place where it could politically rate its political system of Hezbollah? I wouldn't want to make any type of assessment today. We have seen so far on the ground limited ground incursions. Um, but as you heard me say previous times at this podium, we are also cognizant of the long history of Israel starting with limited <coughs> ground operations in Lebanon, turning those into full scale, more full scale ground operations, turning those into occupation, something that we are very clear we are opposed to, we are against. And so we're going to continue to have the conversations with the government of Israel about that because uh, I think it's quite obvious that there is a point at which what they're doing now turns into something different and that has obviously obvious political effects inside Lebanon as well as humanitarian effects on the Lebanese people. And what is the U.S. definition of limited incursions? So what we have seen to date have been limited ground incursions, which is, the, which is the which is the which is the the Israeli troops going um, a short distance across the border, conducting operations, not pushing deep inside Lebanon. I, I, I'm not going to offer a, an expansive definition other other than to say. We will watch what they're doing and make assessments um, based on the facts on the ground. But limited um, refers to the amount of land that they are going into in Lebanon, not the number of troops that they are deploying. Yes, at this point, it's the, it's the amount of land. And so and that's a great question because um, I think there was public reporting over the past few days that they were deploying <coughs> additional troops to Lebanon. If you look at what they were doing, they were deploying additional troops to widen their operations across a longer stretch of the border, not to deepen their push inside Lebanon. And those are two obviously very different things. Just one quick question. Um, we're seeing Israel's military operations in Gaza ramp up again this week. Does the U.S. support these renewed military operations in Gaza that are being conducted? We will always support their right to go after terrorist organizations. And that, in course, of course, includes Hamas, and that includes Hamas in Gaza. But we continue to have concerns that without a political plan, a, pl a, a plan for the day after in Gaza that includes a political path for the Palestinian people to realize their legitimate hopes and dreams and aspirations, Israel is going to be bogged down conducting these types of operations for some time to come. Um, with obviously obvious terrible humanitarian effects for the Palestinian people and with real s security problems for the Israeli people as well. Um, we do not think a plan to just continue conducting operations in Gaza in perpetuity is one that either benefits the Palestinian people or secures long Israel's long-term interests. But do you see any indication that that isn't their plan as of now? So we continue, we're in conversation with them. We would like to get back to the point of getting to a ceasefire, which would set the stages for an end to the war and would help answer this question about what the future looks like and what the day after looks like for um, the situation in Gaza. As I've said, over the past few weeks, Sinwar has been unwilling to engage in any meaningful way in the, in the ceasefire talks. I think it is probably reasonable to conclude he's watching what's happening in the north. He's watching Iran's attacks um, uh, against Israel and looking and thinking maybe he's about to get what he's always wanted, which is a full-scale regional war, and that may have changed his calculation. Um, but either way, he ought to return to the talks because it is manifestly in the interest of the Palestinian people to get to a ceasefire in Gaza. And just one more question on Gaza, if you don't mind responding to the reports of Palestinians being shot as they were fleeing northern Gaza. Uh, so we have seen those reports. I can't speak to the details of them, but obviously that would be unacceptable. If they were Palestinian civilians that were fleeing, that were, uh, uh, were being shot by Israeli forces, that would be unacceptable. We would expect the government of Israel to investigate it, and we, if appropriate, we'd expect them to hold people fully accountable. Is the U.S. investigating it? Uh, we're, we're not conducting our own investigations. As a matter of first course, it's appropriate for the, uh, for the government of Israel to conduct investigations. We have been, uh, uh, intervened with them in the past about this type of incident, and they've told us they have 
hundreds and hundreds of ongoing investigations into potential violations of the IDF rules of conduct, and we expect them to conduct those investigations. And as I said, if they show wrongdoing, to hold people accountable. Have you told them to in conduct investigations specifically into these incidents that have occurred this week? I'm not aware of any specific con uh, contact with them about this incident per se, but this is the type of thing that we often communicate with them about, and it's the type of thing we expect them to take action on.